Hey, everybody, we're just going to kind of open things up here while we let people in so we can start on time. Jessica, I need to open up the chat. I just remembered I need to do that because I'm going to share stuff with people. Yeah. That's your role, your special role. It is. I don't have another role. No, I, I think I do. But um, <laughs> all right, what do we got here? All right. So uh, well, Jessica and I always like starting these off. Are you talking a little bit about uh, what we are um, and what we're currently doing? And I don't know if you can see, but Jessica is wearing a black and white striped top. And we were just chatting about what movies that uh, we've either seen recently or that we're going to go see. And uh, Jessica just exposed herself to a movie that many of us have seen in the past that she hadn't seen before. Jessica, share everybody, share with everybody what movie you just saw. Beetlejuice, the first one. I watched it for the first time about two weeks ago. And I am so that person that my friends were like frustrated with because I haven't seen the most like famous iconic movies. I'm I'm really bad for that. And Beetlejuice has always been on that list. And now I can say I've seen it. And oh my gosh, it was so fun. Matt, I said I was saying to you before the call, I thought it was going to be like borderline scary. Like kind of like gremlins. It's a little bit like it's funny, but it's like a little it's freaking me out <laughs> at the same time. But it was more more just fun. What do you what do you think about Beetlejuice? Yeah, well, I'm I I absolutely love it. We own it. Uh I you know, I watch it annually. We have a oh. Halloween movie thing that my wife and I do, but I'm actually going tonight to see the new Beetlejuice. Uh my my movie theater allows uh, for some reason gets advanced screenings. And so uh I just I'm I'm super, super excited about seeing that. I'm gonna see it at seven o'clock tonight. So and it is almost sold out. There I got one of the last few seats. Nice. Um and it's an IMAX, which I really like, even though IMAX is louder than I think it needs to be. I'm just getting old. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. So we're a minute in. We got people uh, filling in the room. Let's get rolling. Awesome. All right. Matt, do you want to open up the topic? I do. So so here's the thing. Today's today's webinar is really, we we get asked this question all the time, right? So what do you guys know works uh, that will allow you to grow your audience, grow your reach, grow your influence, grow your notoriety, and help you stop being the best kept secret in the area? Our whole idea behind marketing, which we know works very well, is attraction marketing. It's putting out wonderful content that really highlights your expertise and your personality, but then allows people to opt in to want to work with you and that. That is what model we're going to talk really about today. And of course, you know, this is me. Uh, I'm uh, I'm just this, you know, weird, sweaty guy. No, I'm kidding. Uh, well, this is actually a picture that we just posted on social uh, because one of the things that I'm firmly a firm believer in is I love doing hard work. I love doing physical work. I love doing physical labor. And this is a picture of me helping out some friends of ours. Uh, this weekend, uh, the long weekend, I ended up installing a sink, installing a dishwasher, plumbing, both of those. Um, I also ended up, uh, putting up tongue in groove cedar paneling in their living room. And then we also pulled down a bunch of trees. And so that was me working on the outside with my big floppy hat so that I don't get skin cancer on my brain. Uh, and, uh, it was a lot of fun. And I love your shirt that must be pointed out. And that shirt is a little bit, bit of a hint. Of, it is know, it is a little bit of a hint. So we are absolutely going to be bringing up the origin of that saying uh, on the show today as a wonderful example. Yes, and here's me. <laughs> if we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Jessica. I am on the marketing team here at Proudmouth. I'm responsible for creating most of the content you see on our channels, including these webinars. And I'm also the producer of the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. And what can I say about this photo? Not quite as quirky as Matt's, but you know, I tried. If you could see all of it, you'd see there's a teddy bear under the words and it says self-love. I bought nice. it for $1.99 at a <laughs> thrift store and you just can't beat that. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. We are going to go through three growth strategies for expanding your reach. And this webinar, I was going to say podcast, this webinar would not be complete without talking about social media, but namely YouTube. Oh my gosh. You know, in, in recent years, YouTube has, you know, consistently been a cont contender with the major three podcast players, the other two being Apple and Spotify. But now 
now it's leading the pack. This is where, you know, the pe people in the US, it's, sorry, let me look at my <laughs> actual thing I wrote down. It's the most used platform mm -hmm. for people in the US. It's where people are watching podcasts, but it's also where they are discovering them. And this particular, you know, stat quote from Cumulus stood out to me because it talks about the versatility of, you know, a YouTube video. And I want you all to consider that if you're not on YouTube, there's such a tremendous opportunity to be serving your audience content in the way that they prefer it completely on their terms. And to expand on that, Spotify did a fan study insight report, and they found that from 1 a.m. <laughs> to 5 p.m., people are playing videos, but they're just listening to the audio. So they'll have that, you know, that second screen going on, that other window, and they're just listening while doing something else. But then from 6 p.m. until midnight, they are, people are winding down, they're relaxing, and that's when they're watching videos and really engaging it as that lean-in medium. Matt, what do you think about that and just the opportunity? Well, when, when we were talking about this before, you know, I, I, it's just so interesting because, you know, I will have something on the, the, the our main television and then I'm second screening, right? And so, you know, that's something that we all need to understand that marketing really has fundamentally changed with that, that you need to communicate to your ideal client and prospect in the media they prefer while they're there with organic content. And, and the next slide really, really highlights this very well because, and I know you're going to talk about this, but I'm just going to go over it very, very high, is everybody needs to understand it is not an or, it's an and. Your marketing has to be and this, and this, and this. And if you have the right strategy on the front end, that's pretty easy. But you go ahead and Jessica, take this away. Yeah, oh, exactly. And that's why, you know, we're merging into talking about YouTube shorts here because, you know, they offer, well, what um, Tara Welpert-Levy is saying by using both formats, you can bolster your watch and bolster your subscriber both subscriber growth. It's not about one or the other. It's about both. And then this is an article with Billboard. She went on to say that long-term content, it's still the best way to develop long-term relationships with people, which is, you know, exactly what we want to do in the expertise economy and deeply engage your audience. But then she says that short form is an exciting new way to be part of a viewer's journey and to introduce themselves and their whole portfolio to new audiences. So introduce your whole portfolio to a new audience. So you can think about your YouTube shorts, that short form content as a whole portfolio of the greatest hits from your podcast. And we're actually going to show you an example soon of how to extract, you know, the greatest hits from your YouTube video and turn it into a really compelling short. You know, Nancy and Drew just just chimed in and, and it's so important uh, for, for us to highlight what they both said here, because this is yeah. why we have been consistently saying that 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 podcasts should be sub 30 minutes, 27 minutes is the ideal podcast length. And the reason why is, is what Drew said, commuting, working, doing chores. Most people do those things for about 30 minutes, right? right? Well, except for the working thing. Uh, and then Nancy said that she's the chief schlepping officer for her 12 year old. Uh, and so, you know, when you're driving your child's, uh, you know, back and forth, um, uh, you, that, the child's, wow, your children back and forth, that's a perfect time to be able to consume the podcast that you want. And just so all of you know, that's when your ideal clients and prospects are doing it also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is a bit of an aside, but I think, you know, I, I advocate for advisors to test out different scheduling times for your YouTube videos to see when your audience responds. But because of, you know, the data we're seeing and what we're seeing in the chat, definitely consider publishing it early on in the day so that people can interact with it in the best way or that, that suits them. Okay, let's go on here. Okay. So we were just talking about, you know, turning your long form content into short form content. And we call that the atomic content method, where first you are finding that standout moment, that greatest hit in your podcast to turn, turn it into something short that's going to really entice people to get into the long form. You're going to find it. 
and then you're going to use it to create more gold. In this case, it's a YouTube short. And then number three, you're just, you know, you're going to push past any perfectionism and get, yeah, get it out into the universe, <laughs> into your audience. Number four, you are going to engage with your community because, if, you know, we're not talking to our audience. What, what's what's the point? And then number five, you're going to look for ways to bring it back. And today we're going to focus on steps one, two, and five. So let's have a look here. First, we are going to identify that gold. And oh my gosh, Matt, would you introduce the sample? <laughs> well, so so this is Larry Sprung. Larry and Denise are our clients of Midland Money. Our Midland Financial is a client of ours. Uh, they, they're very, very aggressive when it comes to marketing. They do a weekly podcast. Um, and, and the whole idea is, and this is the quote that I had on my shirt, you know, what did you do today that brought you joy? The, the most fascinating thing about this whole podcast is, is it about financial services? A little bit. Uh, but really what it's about is joy and, and helping people find joy in their life. Um, because money, by the way, can help you uh, with joyful moments. It can provide security. It gives you the option uh, to explore some more joyful stuff. And, and I think Larry and the whole team at, at, at Midland Financial does such a great, great job. Uh, with with using the show to not only really communicate with existing clients, but it's also gotten him on morning television shows. He published a book. Uh, he's been actually, he did a PR circuit in New York on some of the morning talk shows. He's locally, uh, you know, out there too. So um, it really is, it, he's, this is a perfect example of the Atomic Content Method. Yeah, just to echo such a life affirming show. And this is a little bit subjective, but I, I could see, you know, during the evening when people are winding down, like what a perfect, you know, mm -hmm. podcast to tune into. Okay. So we are looking at a specific episode in this little walkthrough. This is with guest Lee Huffman, who is a blogger and a fellow podcaster who focus on personal uh, finance, travel, using credit card rewards to optimize and save for travel. And that's exactly what they talked about in this episode is how do you, you know, make use of rewards to, to enjoy your travel while saving money for investing and retirement. Okay. Now, sometimes it's overwhelming to have too many options. And I'm saying this in the context of looking at your podcast episode and deciding, okay, what, what gold am I going to extract from here? So I recommend introducing a constraint and you could use something like this, the perfect content formula as a checklist where you are going to look for key categories, entertainment. So this could be like a blooper or you're talking about pop culture. Maybe you're talking about, um, you know, advice for renovating the Beetlejuice house, not really Beetlejuice's mm -hmm. house, but <laughs> you know what I mean? And then education, maybe you're debunking some myths, storytelling, you're relating personally to the topic or, or sharing an anecdote and then call to action. You're giving that next step so that people can engage in more content with you. And for this example, we're really going to key into education. So let's actually look at one of the YouTube shorts. I'm going to play it and then we are also going to look at the transcript. So here we go. Oh, and what I'd like to know from you as you're watching, what stands out to you? Why do you think our team chose this particular moment to turn into a YouTube short? What's your best travel hack for a, a beginner, somebody who's just looking to perhaps explore this for the first time. Yeah, I would say, you know, obviously a lot of people in my position, they talk about credit cards because that's one of the, biz the easiest ways to get a big bunch of miles and points like very quickly. But not everybody's ready to do that, right? Maybe your credit's not that good or maybe you're saving up for a house and you don't need those extra credit inquiries affecting your credit. The, the, the number one thing you can do is taking advantage of the money that you're spending today by one, you're registering for things like dining programs, pretty much all the airlines that, that are out there in you know, American and Southwest and Delta, et cetera, they all have dining programs where you register your credit card. And when you eat at participating restaurants, you get extra miles on top of the rewards you're going to earn from your, your debit or credit card that you're already using. 
Uh, then there's other programs like DOSH that, again, uh, you maybe you're, you're shopping at participating retailers, you're getting some cash back, those type of things. Taking advantage of those is huge. Okay. Let me just go to the transcript for anyone who likes to read as well. Um, okay. What stood out to you all? Why do you think our team chose that particular moment? Matt, what do you think? Well, first off, I, I'd like, I, I like how that was set up because Larry came in and he asked a pointed question that, by the way, people actually will search, which is an important right. thing. Uh, but the other thing is I love how the guest um, hit you right out of the gate with one of the biggest concerns, which is, hey, look, you don't have to do this on your credit cards, right? And so, I mean, it even says there, uh, do, 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 where, where is that? You know, they talk about credit cards because that's one of the best, easiest way to get a bunch of miles, but not everyone is ready to do that. It's such a wonderful opportunity for you to put the listener at ease, but still get their attention and provide them with solutions. He dropped something called Dosh. I don't even know what that is. I'll have to look it up. Uh, but you know, that, that, I just think that there's so much there, um, in that less than 60 seconds, um, that really got people's attention. Yeah, and I think that goes so well with what Derek just said. The guests deliver the information so clearly and directly. You know, it's good to have a tangent, but not for, you know, a, a clip like this. Um, yeah, I think he did a tremendously great job. Something I, I noticed right away when I played the clip for the first time was Larry's shirt, that bright pink shirt. You know, if someone is scrolling through the shorts on their phones. They're playing automatically. Like wouldn't that shirt, you know, catch catch your attention? And then in the background, he has the wedding photo. So I I noticed the shirt and I really like that we we get this strong, um, great first impression of Larry himself. Because really the clip could have just been the guest and that would have been fine, but it adds something extra special to see Larry and see him as, you know, the host of this podcast. And then I actually, um, I talked to Liam on our team. He's a content creator and he's the one who actually chose this clip. And I asked, you know, why, why this one? And he said something to me that I didn't expect. And he said that his mom has always been really, really savvy with saving um, money on traveling, that she always managed to get them the best deal on you know, hotels and activities. So he related to it personally. And it, it just reminded me that content is always personal. And when you're thinking of those moments to highlight, if something moves you, you know, pay attention to that feeling. It, you know, it's hard to create a checklist around this, but it's not about a checklist. It's about feeling something. Because if it means something to you and if it moves you, you know, why wouldn't it move someone else? what else we can say about this i think the major point when we're going through the perfect content formula and really looking at that education category um, we have so many great hacks in this episode how do you choose just you know just one this one i think all the reasons you pointed out is that he removes that credit card obstacle mm -hmm. removes you know maybe the biggest obstacle for the audience okay like there's so much more we could say about this, but maybe I will, I will move on. <laughs> okay. So we have this awesome YouTube short. We're going to create more gold with it. Why wouldn't it be? So wherever you are, you know, posting on social media as part of your strategy, bring the video over there as well, but think about um, tailoring it to those platforms for LinkedIn. You might want to, you know, pull out some of the tips that are in the video put them in the post, ask people a question and try to amp up that engagement. And you could do something very, very similar for Facebook as well. And then, okay. So social media, for sure, we can create more content, but what else could you do with this moment? You know, what else could you create beyond social media? I'd love to hear any ideas you all have, including you, Matt. 
Well, so, so, you know, one of the things that Derek, Derek, just a, a message and said, you know, that there's so much more that goes into uh, just what comes out of your mouth, you know, uh, and I mm. love that you brought up the pink shirt and you brought the wedding picture behind, you know, actually, if you go back a slide and you really look at what the other guy who I just keep spacing on his name, you know, his background is all pictures of travel, right? I mean, there's guys, this is all by design, right? These people aren't, aren't the great content creators aren't winging it. Right. They really have a, a, a very specific like Larry's headspace is always in the exact same spot when he's recording. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these little tick boxes, but get, getting back to the content specifically, where else can you use this? How else can you use this? There's lots of different ways that you can that you can turn this. And, and we say a lot about um, content begets content. And you're going to find that more and more in your content creation journey. You're going to interview somebody and there's going to be these travel hacks. And that could end up being two or three other episodes because somebody said something that triggered something that made you think of something different. Um, you know, that is really, really important. And Jessica, go, go, go to the next slide because I think these mm -hmm. are such great examples of the other thing that you can do. You know, again, fe featuring this in a, one of these three things, how great would it be for, for Larry to co-author a blog or a white paper on these travel hacks? And going back to the and, not the or, why couldn't this be a webinar? Now, a podcast, Larry's really tight. He keeps it 30 minutes. But if you wanted to do an hour-long webinar for your clients based off of what you already talked about in the podcast – you're already, you have that relationship with that guest. You understand their style. They already trust you. You trust them. It's going to be a good webinar. You have to realize that this whole atomic content method is all about taking the long form content and doing everything possible you can do with it so that you don't have to constantly be creating content because guess what? You already did it in the long form. Yeah. I just want to share one thing that I noticed in the transcript. This, you could tell this was just such a good episode because he goes on, right. And it's like, wait, this, you know, this is really good stuff too. He's talking about the Lee is talking about how um, he's doing all the shopping online. He skips going to these big box stores and goes through a shopping portal first. It's like, wait, what? You know, for some people that's a dream come true <laughs> to avoid going to yeah. the store and be getting points. So whether it is another social media post that's more text-based or an email that maybe teases the episode, you could almost transcribe this in the email, make it really skimmable and give all the points and then lead into this. Like, but wait, there's more. And that's how you, you know, draw people into listening to the entire episode. Okay. Nancy, Nancy asked the question, do you yeah. usually repurpose long form content into some short form or is it completely different? Yes, we are using the long form content, the exact, that's why Jessica wanted to show you the transcript uh, is because that's actually what we do. We take the long form content and use your words to create other pieces of content. Um, now I, I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to grab this from you, right? Because um, I, I think the the rinse, lather, repeat, or or lather, rinse, and repeat is really, I think, how we're supposed to say that. I don't have hair, so I don't ever do that. But, um, you know, the idea here is uh, think about all of the different applications. So, for instance, so this podcast specifically with, with Larry, um, he could repost this episode or remind everybody uh, – around the 4th of July when there's a lot of people traveling or the holidays when people are traveling or Memorial Day or Labor Day when people are uh, are traveling. That's the sort of stuff, that's this rinse, lather and repeat component of this is just because he posted this, this is episode 192, doesn't mean that he can't repost episode 192. And one of my favorite things to remind all of you is that it's a show and how many of you uh, have like, I have all of Led Zeppelin's albums, just as an example. But guess what? I also have Led Zeppelin's greatest hits, which is ridiculous because I already have all of those al all of those songs on other albums. But I love Led Zeppelin. I'm a fan. That's what we're trying to teach you guys to move those people from being skeptics to fans. They want to hear the greatest hits. 
then you just replay it. Hey, look, this was episode 192. It came out, you know, uh, around Memorial Day of last year, Labor Day of last year, busiest travel season we've seen in a long time. Guess what? Holiday travel's coming up. You want to earn some points? Go back and listen to this episode. Just such a great way to reuse the content over and over instead of always having to organically create new content. All right. So the other thing that that is, so this is number two. So that was just all the first growth tactic that we're going to talk about. We have this one and we have one more. I get asked all the time, what am I going to talk about? How am I going to engage my audience? Jessica, you and I were talking when we were practicing this, right? And and you said that you're sitting around the table with Peter and, you know, Peter's kids. And and what what is the topic of conversation often? It is, you know, what we watched or listened to that day. Yeah, totally. And this is, you know, three generations, right? Yep. Gen Z, millennials, Gen X. Yeah. Yeah. And so... It, and I can't tell you, you know, my wife will, will will come back from running errands and she's like, oh my God, I was just listening to the Allergies podcast or the Spartless podcast or right. Brett Goldstein's podcast. I mean, this is something that, it, it, please understand that your show can be one of those things that people are talking about. All right, so I'm, I'm going to very quickly um, digress into this just for a moment because I think this illustrates something really good. I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, but you know, there, there's been a stock that's been talked about a lot. It's called NVIDIA. Uh, and everybody's talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA went up 9 million percent and people still weren't happy with the damn earnings, right? So let's say you do, as you probably should as a wise financial advisor, potentially talk about it because it's really top of mind. And, and it's going to be top of mind for a while because it's really about AI. It's not just about NVIDIA. And so let's say you do a podcast on NVIDIA. So you're sitting around and you're hanging out with your friends and family and somebody, of course, since you're a financial advisor, is going to ask you about freaking NVIDIA. And your job is as a wise marketer and somebody who is proud of their content, hence proud mouth, uh, you're going to say, hey, guess what? I did a whole show on the pros and cons of individual stocks, especially individual tech stocks. Did you know I have a podcast? Well, gee, Uncle John, I didn't know you had a podcast. Well, I do have a podcast. We talk about this stuff all the time. You're getting some really bad information about this, right? Uh, you probably should understand the foundations of what you do to make those decisions, which is what my show is about. Guys, you have to be proud. You have to be proud. You have to be proud of your content. Um, but the other thing that can happen, which is really, really fun in my opinion, is you can actually engage your clients and your family and your friends uh, in a lot of different ways. And one of them is you can do something old school. Now, I was just watching an interview with Warren Buffett a few minutes ago before we started this uh, because I, I lived in Omaha and like we knew where he lived and he was never there. But, uh, you know, it's really the Oracle of Omaha is what he's known as. And one of the things that Warren Buffett always says is um, when everybody is running away from something, you should probably look at running toward it, which he's the was the wealthiest man ever uh, in existence, really by stocks and bonds, right? Very different than, than Bezos or, or Elon Musk or some of the other rich people. Um, this is a postcard. So when you're going to launch your show, this is actually a thing that we gave to our, our clients at Tempest Podcast. They send this out. They hand this out. This is something that they put out to their entire mailing list to inform them of a show. Guys, it's amazing how well this works. People people are like, man, I can't believe I sent that postcard out. I got like 200 people listening to my next show. Really? Yeah, well, we do this because we've done this for a little while. We know that it really works. But then you can really you know, kind of take it to the next level. And the next level is really, truly trying to engage people. And so we really believe in this strong stance growth strategy. Again, you can love NVIDIA or hate NVIDIA. Here's one of the best ones. You can love annuities or you can hate annuities. You can even say, you know, your podcast title can be, what's up with annuities? People who love annuities are going to listen to your podcast. People who hate annuities are going to listen to your podcast, right? Uh, same thing with like tech stocks, individual stocks, life insurance, life, retirement. Should you, you know, do I need to wait till I'm 75 to retire? People like 75, what the hell? Click. Right. So we want to make sure that you're saying fun stuff that is going to get people's attention. And we know that this works and it works really, really well. But 
<laughs> I am going to throw out caution here because this is important. Uh, and it, it's wisdom from my grandmother. And so, um, so my grandmother died. She was 101 years old when she passed. And this picture was when she was about 90, 91 years old. Now, my, my, uh, my favorite memory of my grandmother is I, I brought my wife to, to meet her because it was important to me. This is my freaking grandmother. Uh, and, uh, she made my wife a brandy old fashioned. Uh, and it was like, my wife drank about half and she's like, Matt, Matt, I'm drunk. And my grandmother was too deep in the brandy old fashions. Uh, but she always used to talk about me being a gentleman and how it was important to be a gentleman. Uh, but more importantly, that there was something called polite conversation. And these are the four things that we don't want you to talk about in polite conversation. And we already break one of the rules, right? So we're a quarter of the way breaking grandma's rules here about polite conversation. We talk about money all the time. We do recommend, even with a strong stance, that you should stay away from politics, religion, and sex, okay? Unless, and we actually have uh, somebody that, not a client of ours, but somebody that that I personally follow, who's a financial advisor who works with people who are in, uh, you know, the sex industry, right? Uh, her podcast, her content is all about that. But that's part of her brand, right? So that, would, of course, would have made my grandmother have a heart attack, but whatever. Uh, but these are just important things. Re remember, it is still entertainment unless you want to be known as the person who is talking about things that are really cheeky, um, which most of you don't. And by the way, compliance isn't going to let you do it anyway. So just stay away from those things. If not, you're going to piss off my grandma and she's going to come haunt you. So uh, anyway, so I'm sorry. I'm kidding about that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> So this question is one that I think is going to really spark a lot of really good thought in all of you. So your ideal target market, what is the one thing that you hear from them all the time that is stopping them from being super successful? What is that thing? And when you really look at asking yourself that question, it can end up yielding a lot of different things. So let's say you work with corporate executives who uh, are, are highly compensated, who have uh, complicated option strategies and employee stock option uh, program, plus they also have big benefits, plus they get really big commissions, right? Well, obviously finding out how much they should save so they don't get lifestyle creep is probably one of the biggest things that's holding them back from potentially living the retirement that they want. If you know that, that should absolutely be one of your episode titles. Now we have an example here of, of uh, the, 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 big pros and cons. Uh, and uh, we really love this for two reasons. Number one, because, and I use this already uh, because I was kind of planting the seed for all of you is this people who love annuities are going to listen to this. People who hate annuities are going to listen to this. And, and Keith is going to be wins, right? He wins. He gets more people listening and hopefully more engagement because he's asking a great question. Jessica, do you have any strong feelings on this puppy? Yeah. Well, I, I really look, actually, I, I, I think I wrote this title <laughs> years ago. So I'm a little bit biased, but um, looking at it again, I really like that. It asks that question and it's, asking a question in, you know, the same words that his audience might ask it, which is really powerful for catching attention and just, you know, proving that you really know your audience and, and what they're wondering. And here are the pros and cons. Like there's such a, you know, curiosity gap factor in here because there's no stance taken yet. And there, there might be, not be a stance in the episode. I don't know, but you really have to listen to find out. So I think there's a really strong first impression here. I like it. Yeah. So one of the other big growth strategies that we're, we're going to talk about is this idea of 12 by 20. The 12 by 20 is, is something that um, not enough of our clients use full disclosure. Uh, and one of the reasons is because for some reason, a lot of you are terrified to talk to your A plus clients. And that's where this strategy begins. You're going to find your top 10 or 12 of your A plus clients. 
and you're going to talk to them about something that they're fiercely passionate about. I'm going to use pickleball just as an example, because everybody talks about pickleball right now. It just makes a lot of sense. And so you're going to go to Jessica. Jessica is my number one A-plus client. I'd like to replicate 500 of her, because if I did, I have the greatest practice in the world. And I'm going to say, Jessica, listen, I know that you absolutely love paddleball. Uh, if I could interview anybody who's like your hero in the world of paddleball, who would it be? Jessica might say Martina Navratilova. I don't, I don't, I don't, she doesn't play paddleball, you know, she's a tennis star, but whatever. I'm just using that as an example, you know, and I can say, well, do you know her? And Jessica's like, well, yeah, I have coffee with her, you know, once a month or something like that. Or she came and did a, did a, a workshop at our paddleball court. Okay. Would you mind making the introduction? Uh, because I want to get her on the show because paddleball is really big within retirement, right? So all of a sudden you guys can already see where this is going. I hope. So I get Martina on the show. First off, I'm going to immediately call my client, Jessica, and say, hey, Jessica, I got Martina. She's coming on the show. I'm super excited. Hey, do you have any questions specifically that you'd like me to ask her? Oh, my God. You know, and I, even better, if you can get Jessica to come on the show and help you with the interview, talk about solidifying a relationship with Jessica, your number one client. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, and then once the episode is done... I'm going to reach back out to Jessica. Oh my God, I just had the greatest interview with Martina. Uh, you know, I, you know, here's when it's going to be dropped. I can't wait to, you know, for you to share it with all of your friends, uh, you know, because, you know, this is, I, I, by the way, I shout you out. I say, Hey, you know, I want to thank Jessica for, you know, introducing to me to Martina because, you know, they're both big paddleball people or pickleball people. And they're really, really excited about it. Um, all of a sudden, I have just gotten my top clients feeling like they are part of my show and who are also going to share that show with everybody that they know that plays pickleball, which is going to open up your audience. And if you look at it, you know, you're looking at an extra 240 people, well, minus the 12, right, who are not your existing clients. But by the way, they might not be listening to your show, but this is such a magnificent way to draw people into your show and get them really engaged and also helps you come up with topics and get more of your ideal clients and target market listening to the show. Hmm. So we got a script. Uh, do, you know, I need to put that. Do we have that here? I don't have a link to it, but I can send it in the okay. replay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll make sure that we send, we send that out. Um, Guys, this this is I've written scripts for years. This is just part of something that that I do. Um, you know, so so Drew Drew actually just messages managing the emotions for parents and kids around the college selection mm -hmm. process. So Drew, you know, you, you 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 that's your biggest issue with your clients, right? Bringing on the um, admission specialist at Harvard or something crazy like that in your area would be a great thing to be able to do, especially with a 12 by 20, because, you know, that's probably what a lot of your clients are freaking out about, or even grandparents are freaking out and say, Hey, look, you know, are you concerned about college funding? Well, of course I am. That's another way to use the 12 by 20. It's just in a little bit different way. So, um, this is a really great script. I, I really like using this and we, we like scripts because, you know, it really helps. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, it's shortened to the point while being mm -hmm. friendly as well. Yeah. I think that's yeah. also important. So the other thing that you can do with your 12 by 20 is really look within your book of business and see if there's anybody who's actually famous, uh, right. who can uh, open up, uh, opportunities. Now this is not necessarily as much of a 12 by 20, but this is an interesting example. So Billy Peterson has harnessing your wealth, by the way, we just did a top advisor marketing episode with Billy Peterson on that episode, uh, talking about running his practice and being very focused on people who are into horse racing. He was actually a, a award-winning jockey for many years of his life. Um, but Angie and Sean are actually clients and these people, which I didn't know this until, you know, we researched this, were actually on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So being able to even go into your existing book, book of business and find different people, you might have, they live in Salt Lake City. So these are famous people in Salt Lake City. Billy can go out to his entire book of business and say, you ever watch the, uh, you know, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Or do you know anybody who's a big fan? You do, great, here's an episode, right? And that's just such a wonderful way to um, to focus on that stuff. You know what? I think I missed a link there, Jessica. I missed a link to um, sharing the one about the annuities one. All right, so the link I'm sharing right now is the link to this episode. So everybody go ahead and click on that. And then the other one, which is the annuities one, does it have a bad rap? Um, I want you to go ahead and listen to that one too, because they're both such great examples of how you can use podcasting to your advantage to deepen relationships with existing clients and access new audiences by doing stuff like this. Perfect. Thank you, Matt.
for sharing the links. And I just want to go over some of the post episode marketing because that's really, you know, if there's any magic, that's the magic in this strategy is encouraging your client to share the episode, you know, now that it's been produced and published and all of that. And, and hopefully they're really invested in sharing it because they've played a role in creating the content. I know I would be. <laughs> so with this first um, template, this is for direct messaging. You know, think about how people share content with their friends and contacts. It's, you know, DMs often, um, Facebook, Instagram. This one's, you know, meant to be short and sweet because they already know the person. Hopefully, you know, because of that relationship, that person's already, you know, inherently interested in something that this person has created. And then the next one, Facebook groups. Um, even if your client hasn't mentioned being part of a Facebook group, honestly, I never say to just assume, but just assume <laughs> that they are part of one or that they might join one. Like there's a Facebook group for everything. And, you know, for me, I'm just, I joined a pickleball league. I haven't played yet, <laughs> but, you know, if I created a podcast about it or was, you know, part of that process, well, now I might join a group because now I have something to contribute. So here's a template for that. And with this one, you are getting a little bit into, you know, unpacking the actual key points from the episode. Because remember, in a group, you still are competing with other posts. And then finally, we're recommending that the client shares with 20 contacts, but let them blast it out if they want to. Like if I shared this on my Facebook, my dad would share this with 50 people, you know, within a matter of like... <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. so let people do that. And in this template, we're, you know, it's likely that their contacts on Facebook may not have prior knowledge of the topic of, of pickleball in this case. So you do want to insert the guest name, give a little bit, you know, this prompt to give a little bit about the guest. And then again, about the key points. All right. On to the last growth strategy, Matt. Yeah. So one of the things that you guys will find out the deeper and deeper you chase this podcasting and content marketing journey. Now, we, I, I want people to understand that when we're talking about podcasts, we're not just talking audio only anymore. I mean, Jessica started off this thing. We talked about YouTube. Guys, this is video podcasts. In fact, the, the links that we've shared have all been, except for the, the one about annuities, because that was before we did video. But um, all of the other ones actually are videos, and they do have a video component. You can find them very quickly on YouTube. But getting back to sitting around the table with your family and friends, this is how you can get ideas of other people's podcasts for you to be on or for you to listen to. So, um, and Jessica, you've, you've actually got, was it, was it's 54%. Yeah. So, uh, you said by hearing the number one way that people find out about shows. And that's the same thing when you're sitting around the table, when my wife comes home from, you know, running errands or, you know, going out and helping people, uh, you know, she's always listening to shows. You can use this to your advantage. Now I'm going to go very selfish here. We didn't plan this. So I'm going to be very quick, but, but we got one of our best podcast, one of my favorite guests I've ever had on the top advice marketing podcast, because my wife was listening to the allergies podcast. And this guy who has his PhD in mythology was talking about mythology on the podcast, but his focus is on storytelling. And you guys know storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action is our perfect content formula. And Angela said, Matt, you should reach out. My Angela's my wife. You should reach out and see if he'll be on your show. I DM'd him. We weren't even connected. I DM'd him on LinkedIn. Within 48 hours, he was booked on the show. Uh, so we'd never be afraid to ask. Always find out what other people are listening to because it can really, really, really help you grow your audience. Which is the podcast growth swap strategy. Now, listen, we call this OPP, Other People's Podcasts. Um, there's all sorts of techniques here. There's all sorts of different things that you need to pay attention to in order to make this work. Um, the number one thing is, is you want to get centers of influence. You want to interview them on your show. If they have a show, you want to make sure that when they come on your show, you ask immediately. This is one of the things that Kirk and I have done for years here at Proudmouth. If you have a podcast and you come on the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, you, I have to be on your show or Kirk does. That's just, that's the deal, right? You're going to gain access to my audience. I'm going to gain access to your audience. 
A yes is they're going to be overlap and it makes us both look really, really good because I'm going to make you look great on our show and your job is to make me look great on your show. And that's this strategy. And it is how we've grown our business here. This is how so many of our clients have really grown their business. You get a CPA who's a high visibility CPA, right? They have their own show, flip the switch, right? So I, so one of the guests that we have, Nancy Jacobson, who's on uh, right now, uh, Nancy is actually a bookkeeper. Um, and, you know, just the opportunities that you have uh, to be able to have advisors on and business owners on and all of these people who could potentially have a podcast, you can then be on their show. That is so good. And, and here's the long and the short of it. It's basically an endorsement and a testimonial without it being an endorsement and a testimonial. Um, because why would they be on your show if they didn't think you were good? Now, there is an issue though, because a lot of you want, and I made this mistake, by the way, I had a goal two years ago to be on a hundred other people's podcasts. Jessica, do you remember how many I ended up being on? 54? 54, you are correct. Okay. So I made it to 54, but I didn't make it to 100. And, and Tom Schwab, who's a recent guest on our show, just brought this up. And I'm, I'm going to be transparent with all of you guys. It was totally an ego thing. Uh, I mean, would it have helped Proudmouth? Yes. Would it have gotten us more exposure? Yes. Uh, is all of that stuff good? Yes. But it really was because I wanted to be on 100 other people's podcasts. What Tom says here is that you want to be on the right ones. And where those right ones aren't necessarily where you think they'll be. Like a lot of you are going to want to be on a CNBC podcast or an investing podcast. Well, who listens to those? You do, not your ideal client. So you should probably, and actually Tom's got a whole system for this, to try to find better podcasts to be on because that way you're going to get in front of your ideal target market, not the podcast you think you would want to listen to. That's not how it works. And the, his example that he used on our podcast uh, was, um, what was the one that he used? He used the one about fitness, right? Where, where you know, uh, high earning people generally like to listen to fitness podcasts because a lot of them exercise and stuff like that. So you as an advisor getting on a fitness podcast, especially is going to be like the busy entrepreneur, right? That would be a great podcast for you to be on instead of, you know, market talk. Ah, no, it's not going to help you out at all. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And so we actually have a script for you to help you get on uh, different podcasts. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat early this time. And so this is one of those things that we have in our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. If you guys have not signed up for this yet, I have no idea what you're waiting for. It's 200 bucks a month. You get eight hours to talk to Jessica and myself twice a week, every single solitary week, where we are there to answer any of your questions. And we also have great resources like this. This is a great template for you to make it so that you can introduce yourself to be on other people's podcasts. We know that this script works because not only have we used it, but you also need to tailor it. You need to make sure that it sounds like you. It doesn't sound like us because that's an important piece of engaging a podcast host. But I'm going to give you a quick tip. The best way to use this is actually when you get done interviewing your center of influence using this podcast swap strategy, or even better, when you're using like the OP piece or the strategy of interviewing a celebrity, right? So Martina Navratilova gets done being on your show. One of the things that you should say is, Martina, you are an amazing guest. I'm so honored to have the opportunity to, to you know, interview you. Do you know anybody else who'd like to come on our show? Who's maybe like you, who's a professional pickleball player. Um, Martina is going to know everybody. Right. And she was like, Oh my gosh, there's a great coach who I really love, who I think would be great in the show. Hey, Martina, would you, would you be happy? You know, would it be okay for you? Or would you be okay? You know, in introducing us? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right. It's, it's just, it works so, so well. And, and proofs in the pudding, because here's the deal. We use this strategy all the time. Uh, very recently I was on Angie wisdoms podcast. Um, she is a very high profile coach. Uh, and we were really aligned from a brand perspective, which is why this worked out so well. Um, yeah, 
her whole thing is how to be authentic. We call it being your own loud here. So I got to talk about being your own loud on her podcast. She got to talk about her, how to, you know, really bubble up the authenticity component of your brand on our podcast. And it worked really, really well. You also need to make sure that you're preparing to be on other people's podcasts. This is super important. I'm not going to belabor this. I'm going to have you guys read some of this stuff. I'm just going to just bring up one thing, which is please listen to multiple shows and take notes. When I was on Angie's show, I referenced two other podcasts that she had done that I thought were really good. And I actually referenced the guest and a quote from the show. It just makes you look more prepared. It makes you look more vested because you are, because you did the work. Do your time, do your research, and most importantly, prepare for the show. Um, now, we actually have a question. When we posted that we were going to do this, right, why don't, why don't you take this so I can get a drink of water real quick, and then I will elaborate as needed. Yes, yes. I'm just going to read the question out loud just in case. I'll ask the question because I just heard you answer it so well. How do you know when or how often to sell on your podcast, um, when to bring up what you do, how to connect with you, etc. I so appreciate the question. And I'm just noticing the differences here. We're talking about how often to sell, but it really looks like the question is about bringing up how to connect with you, like selling and connecting with, with you. In my mind, selling is like the call, call me, <laughs> call my office right now. But then the, how do you, how to connect with you? is really the appro approach that we would recommend for podcasting where you're still building that relationship is that's when you are giving people the next step to keep building the relationship, to keep learning from you. And, you know, if, if that's what we're, that's what we're talking about, I would say it's every episode in that call to action you're saying, you know, if you want to learn more, you can download my ebook or I have a free paper for you. Matt, what do you, do you interpret the question the same way? I, I do. And it, it's very interesting because, because I think, I think we can answer both of the questions that they're asking. So Dr. Robert Cialdini talks, talks about the principle of reciprocity. And so when you do something nice for somebody, it is okay to ask them to do something nice for you. That's how society works. And so um, you know, if I give you 27 minutes, it's okay for the CTA, the call to action and the perfect content formula to download that white paper. But the long and the short of it is when it comes to selling is you don't sell on your show. Right. You can invite people to engage in other ways to get them into your own audience so that you can potentially sell them, but you do not want to do the buy my product on the show. People will turn that off. It's like skipping ads, right? It's the same sort of thing. If I know that their ad's coming, I'm hitting skip 30, skip 30, skip 30 until I'm back in the show because they're trying to sell me something and I don't really care. I know they're sponsoring the show and that's important um, because, you know, people can make money on the show, uh, but I don't, I don't want to hear that. I, I want to hear Allie Ward talk about frogs for, you know, another 45 minutes, yeah. uh, even though her podcasts are way too long, but that's a different story. Um, but this was such a great question. You know, I'm, I'm glad, and I don't think Tiffany's on, um, but I'm, I'm very glad that she asked the question because we do get asked this all the time. You know, you know, Matt, I need a return on investment on my podcast. And really what you need is a return on influence, which we did an entire uh, episode on. So, yeah. or a whole webinar on that. So. I just want to say one thing. I really like how you call it an invitation. And that's, that's hopefully, you know, what it is and what it should be. Cause I think that changes how you feel about your call to action. And then of course, how you deliver it. I've talked to some advisors where they're giving a call to action to some really great follow-up content and they still feel like they are selling. And it, it reminds me of something that um, Dr. Daniel Crosby said when he was on the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, I think about it a lot. He was actually talking about the rules of reciprocity, but he said, one of the most powerful things you can do is put some good out into the world yeah. to be spreading you know, sunshine, is what he said, to be spreading sunshine, creating content that makes people smarter, faster, better. And then he went on to say that, you know, is the way to live an awesome life. And for anyone who's, you know, a little bit hesitant to share your content because you still feel like it's being salesy, which it's not, or, you know, you're, you're doubting the value of it. 
just try to see what you're really doing is you are helping, you know, to improve the lives of people around you. And that is always, always worth talking about. All right. Well, we got to move quickly here, sister, so we can get through the last things. Yes, we just uh, put uh, this guest marketing checklist in there. I'm not going to talk about it because you need to click on it and you need to uh, uh, use that to your advantage. But I do want to talk about the Academy, if you don't mind, because it's all about I'll talk about patience too very quickly, but the, the idea here is this is a long-term marketing strategy. All content marketing is a long-term marketing strategy. You're really looking at, you know, 12 to 18 months before you really start seeing your return on investment. But what you're doing is you're deepening relationships with existing clients and, 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 you know, nurturing relationships with potential new clients. Right. And we teach all of this in the pod rocket Academy. I can't stress this enough. We have 34 courses in there right now. We have so much support, so many wonderful uh, exercises and worksheets for you. And, and we even have, we have so many success stories, but this is one of my favorite. So Dan Halid is over in the UK. He's just outside of London, actually. And uh, he's in the top five retirement podcasts in London now, uh, and it's his podcast called Humans Versus Retirement, and this is how he launched his show. Now, he's now brought in a team to help him with it, but this is how he got started, which is what we built the entire academy for. So listen, there's a QR code on the screen right now. Please go ahead and scan this. Um, you know, if you if you haven't engaged with our academy in the past, this is such a fantastic way for you to engage with Proudmouth, spend more time with Jessica and I because we're the ones who do all of the Ask an Experts, which is that eight hours a month where you get access to us and our team to answer any of your marketing and branding questions. Because this is more than just podcasting. This is about marketing. This is about branding. This is about messaging and everything you need to do to truly accelerate your influence. Most of you are still talking to skeptics. Our whole goal is to make it so you're going to start talking and interacting with fans. And the best thing about fans, fans sell for you. You don't even need to sell when you hit escape velocity because you've got so many people who are helping sell for you because they like, know, and trust you. But more important, they believe you and they want to become an advocate. Taylor Swift didn't need to openly market her ticket sales because the Swifty army did it for her. Now, you might not want to be Taylor Swift. I do personally, but that's okay. It's a different story entirely. And I can talk to any of you about that over drinks if you'd like. Um, but if you truly want to make your life easier, you got to put in the time, you got to put in the work, but more importantly, you need to have a plan. And that's what the Pod Rocket Influence Academy can help you with. So, all right, everybody, if you have any questions, you can message Jessica. And if you have not followed her on social media, please make sure that you do. Please make sure that you follow me on social media. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. Uh, I answer all of my own direct messages and I get a halfway decent amount of them. Uh, and so does Jessica. So if you have any questions, you can ask. But more importantly, spend a little bit of money. It's a couple hundred bucks a month. Unbelievable value. We'd love to have you there. And with that, we'll see you on the other side of this webinar very, very soon. Thank you, everyone.